us go together in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for allowing us to be here. Um, I pray, God, as we're here, that we're worshiping you, God, in spirit and in truth. I pray that as I'm delivering this message, Father, that you use me as a tool, that you speak through me, God. I pray that everyone here will have open hearts and open ears, God. We thank you for the sacrifice your son made. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray this prayer. Amen. So, today's sermon is a sermon that is pretty close. It makes me a little uncomfortable, but it's kind of weird because it's about forgiveness, but it makes me uncomfortable because um, this is something I learned when I was in Texas. Uh, This is something that, this was the time I really experienced God's presence on forgiveness. Um, And this is going to get, I hope it doesn't make you uncomfortable, I'm just going to get a little vulnerable with you and I'm going to explain to you how God brought me from a place of being really dark to a place of understanding what forgiveness was. I came from a background of I understood what grace and love, I understood what those things, well, I wouldn't say I understood. I knew what the words were, but I didn't really understand what they were. Does that make sense? I had a best friend named Landon, and, uh, and we were in rooms together, and this guy was one of those, you know, uh, someone that I wish I could have met a long time ago. He's like, he was a college graduate, he wants to be a farmer, all these things. And he's in Honduras right now, but this guy, we're sitting there, and uh, we, we had a Bible study at my house. I was like, oh, let's get all the brethren together in thy house. So I, we, got all the, we got all the aimers in the house, and then we're in my, like, tiny apartment. And I remember we were talking, and I forgot how the conversation got started, but this guy named Fuzzy said, oh, God's grace is awesome because he always forgive me no matter what I do. And I was like, what? What do you mean? It's like, you're, you're an apostate. God's not going to forgive you for anything you do. I was like, what are you talking about? I was like, so you're telling me that if I go out and I get drunk right now, that God would forgive me the next day if I truly, have, if I truly want him to forgive me, if I'm truly sorry? And he says, yes. And I was like, oh, I'm leaving Sunset. This place is, I don't know, you guys call yourself Christians. So I remember I left and I walked down to 7-Eleven and I got a huge, huge chocolate milk. And I'm sitting, and I'm drinking it on the side of the road and I'm just sitting there just looking. And Landon comes over and goes, hey, Stephen, are you all right? And I was like, oh, get out of my face. It's like, am I all right? But... Landon was patient with me. Landon said, you know what? Grace and forgiveness is available for everyone. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever. I'll be gone tomorrow. Trust me. And then I stayed. And then I remember that night I broke down and I was praying to God. And I said, God, I want to really understand what forgiveness is. I really want to understand what this grace is. I really want to understand this message that everyone's trying to tell me in my apartment that I think truly aren't following you. I just want you to show me what you have to say. And uh, if you can turn on the slide, please. And this is how I see it, forgiveness. Our relationship depends upon it as well. Our relationship with God depends on forgiveness as well. And this, it's it's you're thinking like, what do you mean? Of course, I know Jesus forgave me. But it's also about us forgiving others. It's also about us receiving forgiveness from others as well. Um, And the reason why I'm going this route is because in our culture today, um, in our culture today, especially like where I came from in like Las Vegas and Phoenix, it was kind of a cutthroat society, probably a lot like Miami. And it was a lot about if someone does you wrong, you don't really have to forgive them, right? Someone did me wrong, I just do what I want. I remember when I was like 12, I ripped a kid off for like a Game Boy. I gave him a broken, it's kind of funny, but it's not funny. But I gave him a broken um, electronic like little car. And I said, hey, man, this thing works. And he goes, okay. And I said, yeah, but I want that Game Boy. And I was like, mom got me that for 80. I want the Game Boy. And then we traded. And then he says, hey, uh, the electronic car doesn't work on my Game Boy bag. I said, well, there's no return policy. That's, that, that's the kind of, I was little. That's the kind of society we grew up in that you don't have to worry about forgiveness. And if people do you wrong, it is what it is. That's what our culture talks about. And I remember when I was a little kid, the church I went to was in the middle of the projects in Vegas on Martin Luther King Boulevard. And I remember um, I was the only Hispanic in that congregation. It was predominantly African American. You're asking, what does that matter? Well, because since I was the only one that was Hispanic, I grew up... And I remember I thought, uh, uh, the preacher used to tell me, he said, Steve, you are black. And I was like, oh, okay. So I thought that, right? I, I was just hanging out. We're hanging out. We're having fun. And this one kid from the neighborhood comes to the church, and he says, no, you're not. And I said, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. And then I went to school, and the teacher said, no, you're not. I said, oh, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Anyways, long story short, I got bullied by the kids in the neighborhood. And the kids in our church, which happens to be the preacher's son, said, Steve, we're going to get them back. So we started throwing rocks at them after church. This is at the church building. We picked up rocks and started throwing rocks at them. Right? 
But the culture around us taught us as little kids that you don't have to forgive people. You get back even. Whatever they've done to you, you get back. Just you get back even or you get back even more. That's the culture we grew up in. And unfortunately, that congregation that I grew up in, it's reflecting the culture of the world right now. And that shouldn't be the case, right? It shouldn't be the case that you come into a church building and we barely understand what forgiveness was. It shouldn't have been the case when I'm 20, I was 23 22, however old I was, and I didn't even know that God truly had forgiveness, that God truly had grace, because unfortunately, this is a topic that we bring from the world inside, whether we believe it or not, um, and uh, I was real close to someone, and we were having this conversation, and I was talking to him, I said, man, you need to forgive them, and this is another reason why I say it's spilling over into our church, this guy, a godly guy, I mean, he's doing great things right now, he says, no, I don't need to forgive them, because I'm not ready to forgive them. So you're not ready to forgive them. What do you mean? And he says, Stephen, I'm not ready to forgive them because he's done me wrong. Why should I forgive him? He ripped me off. Uh, uh, Roman says, he's, he quoted Romans and he says, uh, Paul says, be at peace with all men if it be reliable on you is what he said. So that guy was saying, you don't have to be at peace with everyone so you don't have to necessarily forgive everyone. But that's not the case. And I learned this in Texas. When I was a child, I went through some form of abuse, Right? And as a child, I was going through this abuse, and I remember it went from I was like I was like six to nine, and it happened. Like, it happened. And then as I was continuing to grow older, I used it as an excuse to to do all these things that are of the world. I used it as an excuse to just dive headfirst into sin, because I didn't want to forgive this guy, because I didn't want to forgive this girl, because I didn't want to forgive this family. So I was diving head deep into sin because I didn't understand what forgiveness was. I didn't understand what mercy was. I didn't understand who God was. So I'm diving head, head, head first into this pool of sin. And I get to the AIM program, and I still have this baggage on my shoulders. And I'm sitting there, and I remember Pat Schaefer was talking in the Gospel of Luke. And he, I forgot what he talked. He talked about, like, Jesus healing someone. And I remember I was just like, oh, this doesn't interest me. So I started flipping through the scriptures. And then I found forgiveness. And then I found grace, and that's what introduced this whole conversation. And then as I prayed to God that night as I spoke about, I'm thinking about, well, okay, God, what are you trying to show me? And then God took me to Mark chapter 11. And, and this we're going to be in three different texts this morning because I really am a firm believer. And if you look around, I think you'll see it as well. Unfortunately, we take the culture of forgiveness from what the world says it is into the church, and we don't really... Practice the forgiveness Christ told us to forgive. The forgiveness Christ told us to practice is the forgiveness where you choose to say, I forgive you and I will move forward because Christ has forgiven me. And when I figured that out, I remember one night I was sitting there. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, God, I just want you to teach me forgiveness. And I said, well, I read in Mark chapter 11. I went to, I went to Matthew chapter 6. And I'm sitting there, I said, well, I, I can't receive forgiveness from you, God, if I haven't forgiven these people. So then that same night, I remember, it's giving me chills, because I remember I called these people, and I said, hey, I forgive you, and I'm sorry everything happened, and I wish you could meet God the same way I have met him tonight. And you know what they said? They said, I forgive you for everything, and I did nothing. But I chose in that moment to forgive them because Christ has forgiven me. And once I chose to put down that wall, once I chose to forgive them as Christ taught me, not as the world, that's the day I realized who God truly was. That's the day I truly understand what grace was. That's the day I truly understand what forgiveness was. That was the day I truly understood what mercy was. I didn't understand those things when I went to AIM because I was still dealing with it. I was still holding it on my chest. And today, in the churches, the congregations, I, I can go, we can go anywhere and we'll find there's going to be someone doesn't like this person because they said this, or there's always some kind of beef because we as body believers can't forgive each other because we take the forgiveness of the world and say, I'll forgive you, but I'm not going to forget. I'll forgive you, but I'm not going to go dance with you because I already danced with Mary Jane and she stepped on my toes. Right? That's the parallel. That's the only phrase I can think of. But that's what we say. We say, you know what, Mike, you done me wrong. I forgive you, but not really. I'm just going to hold it against you, but I forgave you. That's not the forgiveness Christ has said. Christ, let's go to Mark chapter 11. This, uh, this is what I want to say. Our relationship with others has a direct correlation with God. And we're going to see that in Mark chapter 11. 
Verse 25, please turn there if you have a Bible, please. Uh, turn there with me and let's, let's look into the scriptures together. I'm going to give you a little context. Uh, verse 12 through 14 in this chapter, uh, Jesus is walking by a tree and he curses it for not bearing any fruit. He says, you are not bearing any fruit, cursed be you. Right? And then the Pharisees are planning on killing him. Before that, he also drives people out of the temple and says, you cannot sell things in my father's home. And then the disciples come up to him and they say, Jesus, guess what? The tree that you cursed is actually dead. And Jesus teaches them how their faith has a direct correlation to their prayers. How their faith is just as powerful because he says, he talks about if you tell a mountain to get up and move into the water, it'll move. Jesus says your faith will do things when you pray. If you ask for it, you shall receive it. But then he's, he's giving them this, this key. He says the key to our life is faith in him, obviously, because he says if you have faith, you will pray, and you will say it in my name. So he's teaching the disciples that faith in Jesus Christ is the answer. And then in verse 25, when you... When we're going to read it right now, and it says right here, and whatever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses. So it's interesting because our relationship with people have to do with our prayer life, have to do with our faith, have to do with God. It says, and whenever you stand praying, this is after Jesus is talking about, if you have faith when you're praying to me, it shall be done. And he says this, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. You can't be in a true relationship with Jesus Christ if you're holding anything against anyone. And I learned that that night in Texas. I had something against these people I grew up with because they messed me up. I mean, to this day, I dream. And I can't sleep sometimes. To this day, sometimes I just get like flashbacks and I get mad. But that doesn't matter because Jesus says, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them just as your father has forgiven you. This is after he speaks about how your faith and prayer go hand in hand. So this tells me that our relationship with others has, to do, has a direct correlation to our relationship with God. If I can't forgive the people around me, how can God forgive me? How can I really follow God? I learned that that night. I remember sitting there, and it was, it was probably like around 11. I remember sitting there, and I text these, I, I call these people, and we're talking. And they say, you know what, I forgive you too. And I remember I got that text, and I started crying because I did nothing. And I got mad. And then Landon, because the nosy guy he was, he, he hears me in the living room. He goes, hey, what's going on? I said, nothing, man. I, I got a little cold. And he goes, you got a cold. You look like you've been crying for the last 30 minutes. I said, Landon, mind your own business, okay? And he goes, no, no, no. And he sat down with me, and we talked to like 4.30 in the morning. We had school at 7. And Landon was saying, Stephen, I, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what God's teaching you, but God's teaching me something, too, that our forgiveness has everything to do with that. Because I remember when I told him I forgive you, not only did I recognize that I was leasing a lot of baggage, but I also recognized that I felt better myself. Because I forgave them as Christ has forgiven me. And then I recognized when I did that, my relationship with God was awesome. I, remember I was reading and I was taking in all kinds of things. I was, I was learning from God. I was, taking, I, I, mean, I was learning from teachers and I was taking in all kinds of things. I was sitting there with God alone a lot and I was taking in all kinds of things. Every night I would learn something new and I would go tell someone at a different apartment, hey, did you know uh, 1 Corinthians 13 talks about love? That's awesome. Hey, did you know Ephesians 4 talks about the church? Hey, did you know? And it was every day I was learning something after this because I understood that God has truly forgiven me because I truly forgave others around me. Our relationship with God is the most important. But our relationship with people also influences our relationship with God. Or else Jesus would have never said, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you of your trespasses. If there was no direct correlation, Jesus would have never said, when you stand praying, because he would have left it alone. And he would have said, if you hold something against someone, forgive him. He would have never said that. 
but he did. So that shows us that our relationship with others is important. That shows me, and that should show us, us forgiving others is just as important as Christ forgiving us if we want to receive that same forgiveness. Because not only is God all-powerful, not only is he going to forgive us, but I'm under the belief that if we do that, it allows Christ to move in and heal us completely. Right? I mean, sure, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I can't sleep because I, you know, whatever. But I know Christ is healing me because I don't sit there sometimes and think about it for hours. I'll sit there, I'll wake up, and I'll be like, oh, I'm upset. And then I'll drink a big glass of soy milk because I'm on a diet. And then I'll go back to sleep. And then I'll wake up the next day. I'll wake up the, bless you. I'll wake up the next day and I'll meditate on it. I'll meditate on how much God has done for me, like Skylar was saying. When Skylar was saying, he was, he was going through the story about how they might have done it. When I take communion, I think about all the things that God has allowed me to forgive and forget. Because even though I remember it here, I've truly forgotten it because I asked him, I said, do you want to study? I've asked her, do you want to study? And they say no. And that's okay because I moved on. Because I've forgiven them like Christ forgave me. Imagine if Christ held things against us like we hold things against each other. How much trouble would we be in? Tons. Tons. If Christ held things against me like I held things against those people that made me weak, that made me vulnerable, guess what? Christ would have been like me and he would have hated me. And he would have never forgave me. But Christ doesn't set that example. He says, forgive others. We have to forgive as he is forgave, forgiven because we are not above reproach. That's what I've learned as well. Sitting there and I'm saying, you know what, I might have not done these things like these two people have done. I might have not messed up my life like these two people have done for me, but I've done plenty of things. I've done plenty of things that people can hold against me. I've done plenty of things that God doesn't have to forgive me for. I'm not above them. They just struggle with different things. They just deal with other things. For instance, this last week, I haven't told anyone but a few people, but one of my cousins was murdered, shot in Colorado. I wasn't really close to him. He grew up in Iowa. We have family in Iowa, Wisconsin, you know, um, what's the other one? Michigan, one of those states, the states up there that they're the only ones at. And I get a message on Facebook from my, from my Aunt Stephanie and says, hey, Jackie's son was shot in Colorado, murdered, Right? I don't know who they are, but naturally my instinct would be what? Let's go do a tombstone. Let's go get on the horse. Let's ride across the western states. Let's get them. Let's gather them up. Let's go get them. Let's pull a Doc Holiday. Let's go. Get the six shooter. That's what naturally I would respond. But instead, I'm moving to a place closer to Christ where I say, I don't know who that guy is, but I forgive you. I forgive you. And I wish my family could understand that because right now everyone's torn up. And I understand I'm torn up too. But I have a peace that surpasses all understanding. That's where this forgiveness comes from. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 through 15. Remember, our culture says what? Don't forgive him. I remember I told someone about what happened to me, and he was a real close friend of mine. He says, you know what, man, you should probably just go put a bullet in his head. Her too. I said, I was in the world then. I knew that wasn't right. I was like, eh, I don't know. What's that going to do? They're dead, so what? I remember I told my dad, and my dad said, Stephen, I wish I was there for you. And he was mad, and he said the same thing. He says, but, and my dad said this, and this is a CD plant in my brain. I don't even know if he did plant. I don't even know if he knew he was planting it in my brain. He says, Stephen, I would do that, but you would have solved different kind of forgiveness that's not acceptable. And I don't really know what he meant by that, but what I took from that is my dad saying, if I would have done that, you would have saw something you should never have learned. If my dad would have went forward and, you know, done the old Western thing and go find these people and take care of them. Didn't. But our culture teaches us that. And unfortunately, some of us, and I've done it, I was doing it for years, I brought that same idea of forgiveness into the church. When someone did me wrong, I held a grudge against them. I didn't really forgive you because I was good at that. I learned how to do that. We've all learned how to do that. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 through 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. The, the context of this is Jesus is teaching them how to pray before this in the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus, uh, he's teaching them, he says, Father, forgive us of our debts as we have forgiven uh, our debtors. I may be misquoting it. But Jesus is giving the Sermon on the Mount. He's teaching them how to pray. And then after this, just like in Mark when Jesus was talking about prayer, after this Jesus says, For if you forgive men of their trespasses, your Father will give, forgive you of your trespasses as well. Forgiveness is key to our Christian walk. Sometimes um, we, I hear this, uh, I've heard this a few times where they said, yeah, I'm in a relationship with God. That's, that's true, I am in a relationship with God. But is forgiveness really going to mess up my relationship with God? Yeah, it is. Jesus says so. But if you do not forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Jesus is teaching us to have a heart of him, to have a heart of love. I learned that night as well, not only grace, mercy, forgiveness. I also learned love. I learned love because I moved myself out of the way, even though it was really hard to do that. It took about like, like you know, 18 some years. Move myself out of the way, and I said, I forgive you. And because I forgive you, I want you to know about the love of Christ, because he loves me just as much as he loves you. And it took me 18 years. It's not easy. I'm not saying this is something we're just going to wake up and I forgive you. This is something we have to truly seek out and learn. Forgiveness is a spiritual thing. I experienced it that night. You feel the weight lifted off your heart. You feel the weight lifted off your chest. You feel the love of Christ filling you. You feel the happiness, even though you may be sad. This is forgiveness. We must forgive as Christ has forgiven us. And that's what I was learning. I need to forgive as Christ has forgiven me. I need to love as Christ has loved me. I need to extend mercy as Christ has extended mercy. It's all a part of our Christian walk. Walking, obviously, is we're walking in the light. We're learning his word. We're growing. We were talking about this morning. But walking with Christ is not only just learning his word. Oh, hopefully we're going to get the fruit of the spirit. Hopefully we're going to do this. It, no, it's trying to live like Christ. And that's why forgiveness is so important. Because we're always going to, something's going to be happening to us in life. Something's always happening. And if I hold it against everyone, I'm just going to be pretty mad. I'll be going down another pool to jump head first in. Another pool of sin. Like I said earlier, forgiveness is also teaching us to have the heart of Jesus. Forgiveness is allowing us to truly be like Jesus and say, you know, I forgive you even though you really done me wrong. Even though I really, really don't like what you did, I forgive you. That's the hardest thing for us to learn. That was the hardest thing for me to learn. And that's still the hardest thing for me to practice sometimes. Because sometimes I get pretty mad and I don't want to forgive people. But then I remember, oh, no, I need to forgive as Christ has forgiven me. I need to remember that lesson Christ showed me in Grummy, Lubbock, Texas. Because I just remember once I learned to forgive and once I learned to love, I've been growing ever since. There's no longer a barrier. There's no longer a wall of hatred. There's no longer a wall of whatever it was. Instead, there's an open heart. Instead, there's a heart of thankfulness. Ephesians 4.32 says, And be kind to one another, tenderhearted. Forgive one another just as God and Christ forgave you. That's why when we forgive, we're learning to be like Jesus. Because we need to be kind to one another, tenderhearted. We need to be tender. We need to be able, and this is kind of hard for me, but I need to be able to sit down. I need to be able to say, I, I'm, I'm really sad that you're sad. I'm really hurting because you're hurting. I'm really going to be compassionate with you. Forgiving one another just as God in Christ forgave you. When we're 
when we're kind to one another, it's hard to not forgive one another. It's hard to not truly look past whatever wall it is. Because we all got struggles. We all got something we're dealing with. And every person we meet, there can always be one thing we shouldn't like them for always, right? Because everyone's got something that makes them undesirable. But if we're kind to one another, we're tender-hearted, we forgive one another as Christ forgave us, all those walls start to come down. All those things start to not matter. None of that should matter, no matter how much it hurt. And I'm telling you this because I experienced it. So, and today in the Christian world, we're going to hear a lot about, I don't need to forgive them because you really hurt me. I don't need to forgive her because she really hurt me. I don't need to do this because of this. But Christ died on the cross for us so we can receive forgiveness. And he could say, I don't need to die on the cross for Peter because he denied me. I don't need to die, I don't need to die on the cross for these Jews because they're going to kill me. But Jesus died on the cross for them even though they spat on them, even though they beat him, even though they killed him. Why would Jesus, if he thought like man thought, why would he die for Thomas if he knew Thomas was going to say, unless I see the holes in the hand and the hole in his side, then I will not believe. Why would he die for people like that if he thought like us? He wouldn't, because I wouldn't. But instead, he forgave them before they even knew what they were going to do. Instead, he gave a heart of love and said what? It is finished and died on the cross for us. The ultimate act of love. Forgiveness is so important. It's all throughout the Old Testament. I mean the New Testament. And even in the Old. Forgiveness is key with God. And forgiveness is key with each other. The phrase, and I hate it when this guy told me this. He hurt me too much, so I can't forgive him. Okay. And you're a Christian? What if Jesus said that? How many times do we think we probably hurt him? How many times do you think Jesus was hurting that day he was crucified? This is something that took me from a, a level of being a child in Christ to then just becoming a teenager in Christ. Because I understood what it looked like as he forgave. It's the hardest thing to do. I learned it, and I'm still having to learn it. I'm still having to practice it. Because it's not something that comes natural. It's not natural for me to reach out to these people who pretty much messed up my life and say, I forgive you. I love you. I hope you meet Christ as I have met Christ. That's not natural. It's more natural for me to ignore them. It's more natural for me to say, you know, Whatever happens to you is your problem, bro, because you're the one who made your bed, so lay in it. That's what I could have said, right? That's what we are taught, correct? That's what we are taught throughout school, indirectly. We're taught by our teachers, there's good men that obey the law, and there's bad men that are in prison, and we don't talk to them. Why not? Why not? Those are things that I remember hearing in Las Vegas, and then in Phoenix, it got worse because you had a lot of influence from the Mexican mafia and the cartels. And so if you were a bad guy, no one really forgave you. No one really reached out to you. Not even the church. And that's sad. We've allowed this culture around us to influence, whether we believe it or not, the way we forgive each other. I recognize that in Lubbock. And I recognize that today. How many times do I hold something against someone? Or how many times do I make someone mad and I ask them for forgiveness? Or even if I'm not wrong, I ask them for forgiveness. Because I don't want there to be a wall. There's no point to not forgive one another because Christ forgave us. And I keep saying that over and over again because it's so simple. It's so easy to hear, but it's the hardest thing to do. It's the hardest thing to practice, forgiveness. It's easy to forgive Skylar when he decides to, uh, he's never done this, but when he decides to eat my food. 
right? Like, like our, we share a fridge, right? And I remember we used to get so mad because I think me and Sky, we have the same initials. And I remember one time, I, I never really told Sky this, so he's going to hear this now, but I grabbed his mayonnaise. And I was like, oh, Steven Martinez, I slapped it on. And I was like, oh, that was not mine. SM is Skylar Montano. I put SMM, SM3, right? Those are easy to forgive, right? So, hey, man, I took your mayonnaise. Like, no problem. But what about when we get in a heated conversation and we say things we shouldn't say? Is it easy to forgive them? Or do we always have to walk away? We don't want to see each other for hours, and then we come back together and we forgive each other. What if God did that? What if God got so mad at me because I say something I shouldn't say, because I do something I shouldn't say, so God says, I need a break from you right now, Stephen. I can't see you right now. Go to that room. I'm going to be over here for six hours. And whatever happens to you, I'm bad at you, so it doesn't matter. What if God did that? God forgives us instantly, especially if we're walking in his light. That's, Jesus says, forgive as your father has forgiven you. Stephen was a great example of that. He was a martyr. And Acts chapter 8, I mean chapter 7, verse 59 through 60. And they, and they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Once again, praying, just like all these other verses, he's praying. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he had fell asleep. Stephen was giving them a history lesson before this. The chapter's long. He teaches them about what they believe and how Jesus is the Son of God. And then they stone him. And then as he's praying, he says, Father, do not charge them because they don't know. Don't charge them with this sin. He forgave them like that. Talk about a guy who could have said, I want to talk to you in 10 minutes. He could have said that, couldn't he? Oh, I'll, I'll forgive you in about, I don't want to see you for 30 minutes, and we'll talk later. No. He said, Father, what? Lord, do not charge them with this sin. Ultimate act of forgiveness I see outside of Jesus. They're stoning him. And then he died shortly after. We see Stephen forgave. When he was getting stoned, when he was getting murdered, he was a martyr, what do you say? And of all people, Stephen could probably say what? I want to talk to you right now. I want to see your face right now. Forget you. But he said, he said, Lord, do not charge them for this sin. Because Stephen understood the gospel message. It's just as important for us to forgive others as Christ has forgiven us. A lot comes with forgiving others, trust me. When you forgive others, it allows you to move from a place of frustration, possibly. It may allow you to move from a place of holding it against them, possibly. Is it going to be easy? No. I'm here to tell you firsthand, when you say, I forgive you, it doesn't mean the dreams go away. It doesn't mean that you honestly completely forgot about what happened. Instead, it allows you to say, I forgive you as Christ forgave me, and I'm going to choose to put that aside in my mind and look at you as a person, not as an evil person. That's the hardest thing to do. But if we can learn that as a body, can you imagine how much people we could meet, how much people we could reach? If we didn't hold grudges, if we forgave others as Christ has forgiven us, be tons. People will see that we're like Christ. Forgiveness is the biggest trait of Christ. Love is one of the biggest traits, is the biggest trait of Christ. You can't have one without another. I can't truly love men if I can't truly forgive men. Because if I can't forgive men of their trespasses, how can I say I truly love them? It's impossible, truly impossible. It may be hard to get to that point, but it's hard to love someone and not forgive them. Simple as that. These are things that Christ is showing us over and over and over again. If you pray, if you're praying to me and you hold something against someone, forgive them. Forgive as Christ has forgiven. Be tender-hearted to one another. And Stephen says, do not charge them with this sin. Our relationship with God is important. And us forgiving each other is just as important in our relationship with God. 
just as important as reading his word, just as important as going out and wanting to study with others. It's just as important as all those, but for some reason, I remember as a kid, I never heard a sermon about forgiveness. I never heard lessons about forgiveness. I never heard those things, ever. But that's just as part of our Christian walk as anything else, because Jesus talks about it more than once, wouldn't you say? Forgiveness is part of our Christian walk. And so we really need to try to learn it. We really need to try to be like Christ. It's all part of it. It's all inclusive. And um, I hope and I pray that you understand this just as I have. And if you have understand it, that's awesome. Because then I understand you, you feel what I feel when I say I forgive someone. Once we learn that, Oh, man. Our Christian walk becomes that much easier. Our walk in the world is not as tough. No matter what people do to you, forgive them. You don't hold grudges as hard as that is. It makes things a lot easier for you. It makes things a lot easier for me. I want to close out, but I want to tell you that the peace I have received in my heart because I forgave those people is probably the biggest peace I felt when I was in Lubbock. And when I think about it, I remember that peace because I feel that peace. Because no longer when I see those people am I mad. No longer am I ready to go at it. No longer am I hoping the worst for them. That's the easiest thing to do. But now instead, I'm in a place of love. So when I see them this Christmas, and it's been like two years, it's not going to be as hard as it was all these years before. Because I follow Christ. Because I gave them as Christ forgave me. Now, whatever they hold against me, that's their business. Whatever they say about me, that's their business. I can only control what's on my end, not on their end. I can only forgive as Christ has forgiven me. What they choose to do with that is up to them. What people choose to do with the forgiveness you extend is up to them. But I'm telling you, as Christians, we need to practice a forgiveness of Christ. We need to practice life with forgiveness in it. Because a lot of times, and if you disagree, I would like to just come over and talk to me. But I remember just growing up, and I just never heard sermons on forgiveness. Truly on forgiveness. They brushed over it, but it wasn't a true sermon. What if when I was eight, and they told me this sermon, or they told me this lesson on forgiveness, what if that seed would have stuck? What if I would have went and talked to other people? What if I would have seeked the proper help, but instead, I was taught by the people around me, don't forgive no one, man. Do what you got to do. I had a whole life of hatred. Right? We need to think about these things, please. Really think about these things. When we understand forgiveness we understand another aspect of the gospel message. We understand what Jesus was truly doing when he died on the cross. This is the application I want to give you for this sermon. I tried to be smart with it, so if it makes sense, I hope so. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. It's as smart as it gets. Forgive as Christ has forgiven you, and you will experience his grace, his mercy, and his comfort on your daily walk. How can we receive this forgiveness if we don't give it? How can we receive his love if we don't give it? Christ wants everything, and that means everything. That means I turn myself out and put him in. It's no longer about me, because if it was about me, it would be a lot different, but it's about him. Forgiveness is about him. Forgiveness is wanting to forgive like him. Love is wanting to love like him. Life is wanting to live like him. Discipleship is wanting to be a student of him. Everything is him, not us. So I would really encourage you to look into forgiveness. If you're holding something against someone, really try to look into your heart. Say, can I really, really try to move past this? 
Or do I have a wall up? And how do you have a wall? Do you have a body around you to help you out with these things? If you would like to come forward and um, say a prayer or respond, you can do that as Roman leads us through a song. I just want to say, please look to have a heart of forgiveness because you will be healed from many things. Thank you.